Hey, how you guys doing? I'm gonna test this out and see if this works. So I'm gonna show you how to uh, make your own 3D comics and how to install and get started. So this is a 3D comic. These are different than sort of a regular comic because this is not a JPEG. It is a 3D scene. So as you read the comic, as you scroll, you're controlling the time as you scroll and every single one of these panels are 3D. So I'm gonna show you how to make them, install it from Blender and get started. Actually, probably I might end this tutorial because I actually have to make a, another panel for this comic for Inktober. So I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom. Uh, the last one I did was this, uh, this rain one. I think the next one I have to do is a trap. So I'll show you how to make a new one. So to get started, scroll all the way to the bottom here. And if you click here to make 3D comics, this will take you to uh, Gumroad here. Um, Gumroad is where you can sort of like, you know, throw money into my, my busker hat, blah, blah, blah. Or uh, if you scroll down and you want to get the very latest one, if you go all the way down here to the, where it says GitHub and you click on that, this will go to my GitHub, which is where I actually publish my work as I'm doing it. So we're venturing into the nerdy land here, but since you're a Blender person, I think you might be familiar with that because I figure other 3D artists might look at this. So uh, first things first, click on the green button and click download. That will go ahead and download a zip file that will show up in your downloads folder. So we're going to go ahead. There it is. And we're all set. So now we're going to go over to Blender. And so inside of Blender, just do the normal install as you normally would. So we're going to click uh, install. I'm going to go to the downloads folder. And we're going to click on the Spiraloid Toolkit, blah, 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 dot zip. Don't rename that. I actually need that name for some of the stuff that I'm doing. So go ahead and click activate. And you can see that a menu showed up up here. You shouldn't have gotten any errors. Everything should just work. So first things first, uh, this is the menu. Here's all the stuff. We'll go through it one by one. You can get this menu here, up here, or you can hit shift A. I put it in the new objects thing because so many of the things in here are new objects, but there's definitely a lot more than just objects. So first things first, Make a new 3D comic. This will ask you a bunch of stuff. You don't have to fill it out right now. Say OK. And this makes a new scene, fills out a bunch of things. Notice that the scene name is called the name of the title. And now if you go 3D comic panels, insert row, and say yes to this. Just say number one is fine. It now made a new panel. So if you look up here, you can see there's two scenes. Each one of the scenes are numbered like this. Uh, the width and the height is the actual width and height of the panel in the comic. So if you say 200 uh, height, it'll be 200% tall. If you say 50% width, it'll be 50% the width. Uh, this is kind of uh, important, which is don't rename the scenes. Let the comic book toolkit control the naming because all the comic book panels have to exist within the exact same Blender file and they have to exist within the exact same website, you can't have things be named the same way twice. So we're gonna take care of all the naming, but I'm just letting you know, there it is. So first things first, let's go ahead and make a, uh, a ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and say assets ground. And now you've got a ground. I'm gonna also say, go ahead and make a assets ink bot. It's gonna randomly, ch oh, haha. -ha. If you ever see this error, it's usually because I did something stupid. Like, I forgot to select this and I forgot to write that code. I'll fix this probably by the time you see it. But if you do find errors, please report them either on GitHub in the issues or go to the Facebook How to Sculpt 3D Comics group or just send me a mail. Um, chances are I know about the error already because I use it all the time and I probably hit it. Um, but for right now, I'm going to go ahead and rerun that and say Assets, uh, Inkbot, and it'll show up right there. So the way this works is that... Um, there's actually a whole bunch of Inkbot files in the resources folder for the add-on. And so every time you say, make a new Inkbot, it will actually choose a random Inkbot from the selection so they can be different guys. Uh, and it'll spawn it right on wherever, you're, uh, wherever you've got a cursor and it'll spawn it so it's aiming at the camera. So if you shift right click to place the cursor over there and then you say, uh, add Inkbot, this inkbot is looking at those inkbots. And if you say right there, and you say um, add inkbot, you'll see that they're all sort of arranged in an order. Now, the other thing that's kind of cool is that as you go over these guys, if you, if you go to the utilities here, you'll see that there's this pose cycle next and previous here. If you say pose cycle next, the inkbot will automatically go into pose mode and automatically assume one of his stored presets. 
Now, if you want to make this really fast, the way I like to do it, is if you go to the utilities here and you right click on it and you say assign shortcut, if you put control mouse wheel up, that'll sort for that. And let's set pose cycle previous to be control mouse wheel down. So now we've got control up and down. So now if I hit control up and down, the character is actually going through all of his stored presets. So if I want to make him look like he's doing something. Now, the thing that's kind of cool is that if I go through this and I say, okay, I just want to select just the arm here, I can hit A to deselect that. And if I go into the tool and select just the arm joints, now when I control mouse wheel, just those arms are doing it. So it's a very quick way to like use the previous work. And if you ever want to make your own, uh, you can just go into the skeleton here and go into the pose library and make your own. Um, it made a new action for each one of these guys. So um, obviously your uh, <laughs> your blend files are about to get really big. So uh, name of the game is be efficient, be clean. Um, if you look at these guys in edit mode, you'll see they are actually, they themselves are very, very simple. Um, they're made with subdivs and um, they're very, 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 very simple. So let's go ahead and uh, also you don't have to select the joint to do it. You can select just the skeleton, the, the, the mesh. It'll find the armature so you can control mouse wheel really quickly on a lot of things uh, and very quickly sort of get these guys into different positions. And you can always go through and tap RR to, to rotate them and do all sorts of interesting stuff. So by default, I, I have all, I have my, uh, my aim at hotkey, which is the thing that I have bound to my tilde, so I'm constantly going back and forth between rotate around the cursor at the world origin versus rotate around local. So you just need to, you can work however you want, but this is how I like to work with these guys. Uh, and again, control mouse wheel works for just single joints too, so you can you can see it's working over here in the poses. Um, see what else? Uh, so I have. Um, Alt tilde set to look at the view camera. I also have uh, my view set to um, lock camera to view. So if I move this camera, it's moving the actual uh, game camera. Um, you can do it however you like. The hotkey for that uh, is numpad zero to turn on your active camera. The When you make a new panel, every panel comes with a camera. And it also comes with an aim point. So the camera and the aim point are the two things that are sort of required. So if you look at these two guys, uh, the the camera here, if I move it around, you can see it's already set up with a uh, with an aim constraint. And so if you go and you select just the camera, and you hit G to move it around, you can see it's it's already aiming at that point in the center there. And the reason that it's aiming that way is because when a user is in the comic, and they uh, let's go back to the comic for a second. Um, when the user's in the comic, they're actually translating the camera in X. That's why it looks a little different than an orbit, because it's actually moving the camera in X. So if you want to emulate what's happening here, it's always aiming at the aim point, and it's always moving uh, in X, but up and down. It moves up and down and in X, and then it aims at that aim point. So if you want to set up your camera to be nice and and, and work properly, you got to pay attention to what these axes are, which is the X axis is the way that this camera is actually going to move. So if I grab the camera and I hit GX, you can see this is the motion that the, that the people are going to actually get when they click and drag on the, the character, or on the, on the panel, sorry. Uh, so if you try to pan, uh, you notice that you can't. And the reason for that is because I set up the camera aim point here. The camera actually has a constraint on it. And this constraint is actually aiming at this aim point. And so if you move the aim point around, you can see that little point in the center, that's what we're actually moving. So if you look around and you want to move both of them, that point is what the camera is actually aiming at. So if you select both the camera and the aim point, you can move them both together and move the camera around. So I've got them both selected right now. I'm also looking through the camera. So if I hit G, Z, I'm moving the camera up and down and I'm moving them together. And you can see that the aim point now is going towards the feet, which is not necessarily great because if I, if somebody orbits the camera, they're going to be orbiting the feet. And so you kind of want to be very careful where you place this because this is actually how you're defining the experience for uh, everybody else. So a, a really common thing that I'll do is I'll select, say, a bunch of things. And I'll say, okay, I've got all these things selected. And I'll hit Alt-A, which is my aim at selected, which is puts the midpoint in the middle of the selected things. And then I'll go through and working on the actual uh, cursor control, I'll move that up so that it's in the midpoint there. So that it's kind of like in the middle of all of them. And then I'll go and I'll select the camera aim point and I'll hit shift 
S shift and then say uh, selection to cursor, which moves the uh, moves the camera aim point to the cursor, which I placed right in the middle of all of them. So it still looks like the same, but now when I orbit the camera, we're moving around all of them in a nice way. Um, so that's how you sort of define what the users are going to do when they drag. So there's actually some clever things that I did with that. Um, I chose to do it because it was it was kind of fun because it, it looks good for like a normal rotate. Um, and it looks really cool for stuff like this where I've carefully placed the midpoint midway between the characters so I can get cool framing. So if somebody rotates the camera, they're seeing a lot of stuff that I meant for them to see. Like, uh, for example, up here, um, if you look at this one, this this whole scene is actually rotated on its side. So when I drag up and down, it behaves like a normal orbit camera. But when I go side to side, we're actually zooming in because we're moving on X. So instead of orbiting, it looks like we're zooming in and out because I think the, the moment is cooler if it does that. So you can use that for dramatic effect. Um, and it's pretty cool. So like this one, for example, X is normal. So it feels more like an orbit one. Um, and you can sort of get, you can, you know, you can mess with it and play with it and tune it how, however you like. Um, this one, for example, has an animated aim point. So when you're back at the beginning, you're rotating around the guy. But then as you get over here, we're rotating around the, the, the cutoff arm. Um, so you, anything you, you want to animate, you can. Uh, let's see what else is there anything that's cool that I can show you. Oh, I also do. I, I encourage you to do stuff like this where you have like a really simple panel. And then if you click and drag to the right, I hid stuff right off of the frame. So the, that fish was waiting for someone to click and drag. And it looks cool because like you can hide stuff in the edges of the scene. So like if you look at this wisp one and you rotate the camera here, uh, it's it's all cool, but then as you go through, you're like, oh, there's these little fishies that are that are hanging around, and some of the some of the panels, like this one here with the hand, that fish is waiting right off screen. So you see him in the beginning, and then he disappears, and then if you orbit the camera, you can see him come back. And he's, I knew that the camera was going to move in this way, so I, I sort of staged it so that there's a an event, uh, a goodie, so to speak. I'm probably going to do some other stuff with that, but I'll talk more about that later. Um, Okay, so back to Blender for making our little scene here. So um, another utility that I have that I use all the time is this toggle work mode, which basically goes back and forth between a rendered view and uh, a regular view. Now, I have it bound to my tab key because I remap tab key to be control tab. Um, you can put it on E or something else, but um, this is the bumper car trick of Blender. Um, there's always hotkeys that you can... <laughs> override and collide with each other. So I, that's why I wrote, rewrote all my hotkeys. Um, but the thing that's nice about this is uh, when you do something like, say, ink and tune shade everything. So if you go to comic book, if you go to 3D comic and you go to color and you say ink and tune shade visible, this will automatically go through every object in your scene and set up an ink shader for it. And then it automatically sets up a... Um, uh, a light so that you can move a light around so you can sort of behave in like a, a, a broad, quick and dirty, stylized cartoon, ink shaded way. Um, if you go up to the utilities here, there's a um, uh, a utility called in, I think it's in color, called Cycle Sky. Cycle Sky will automatically create a background and shift it back and forth between black and white. I have it bound to uh, control shift I for me um, in object mode. Uh, I like it black. Okay, and so that's how you do that. But if you go and look at these ink bots, um, the the way that work mode toggle works is that it shows it to you in like what it looks like in the comic book panel. And then when you hit tab, or when you when you, I'll do it with a menu so you guys can see it. When you go and you say toggle work mode, it automatically turns it back into this view. Um, and basically, all it does is it sets all these things up. Uh, the way that I like it. So it has all the shadows and backface culling and blah, blah, blah. But most importantly, what it does is it turns on and off the uh, the modifiers. So see how you have these decimate modifiers and these triangulation modifiers? As I hit tab, you can see that they turn on and off. Um, also, the ink bots is good to turn the decimators on because you want the poly count. Uh, when you're, So right now, this poly count is at 500,000. Um, when you're running 3D comics on mobile devices, you want to try to keep the poly count at around uh, around 100,000 because you can potentially have people on slow mobile phones reading your comic. Um, and so these decimators I have automatically set up with my subdiv add-on. Um, but basically the idea is, is that if you drag these down to like say 0.2 on each one of them, you can see that now we're at 490. And if I go through each one of these guys and grab the uh, the decimator and put it to... Point two for each of them. They sort of uh, they, they look about the same, and this is where you sort of have to 
decide for yourself what uh, what resolution <laughs> matters to you. Um, I'll let you guys sort of hash that out. You know, turn the, make sure you turn the decimators on so you can see it. Um, uh, so, like I said, if you go back and forth here, um, the thing that's cool about work mode is that work mode automatically turns off the uh, modifier. So when I go to this, you can see the modifiers are on and it looks all inky. But when I go back to here, they automatically turned off. And if you turn them on, you can see that you can see why. Um, it's very irritating to go and look at the model in wireframe mode with all of the uh, the ink solidify modifiers turned on. So if you turn on turn them on and off, it looks just a little bit more manageable to deal with, especially if you're going to be modeling on it or editing it. Um, so let's see what else. Uh, so let's go take a look at what we're at. So we're at 375 here. So that guy's at that, this one's still pretty high. Let's turn these guys on. Now we're down to two. I wonder, I got a little too low. We might need to turn that one back up. This guy, these are off. So I'll turn these down. He's still a little low, but we're at 91,000. So we just, just by tweaking the decimator. So now we can go through and say, hey, this guy over here, he should get a little bit more polys. And this is why I didn't automate this part, is because like, uh, I found that just a little bit of, little bit of love. So you can see this bottom number is 100,000. Now we're at a good, now we're at a good size. I don't think we download. Did we downrez this guy already? Yeah, we did. Okay, so. And you can't really tell the difference. So there we go. Um, now let's do one more thing. Let's go ahead and add a word balloon. So if you go uh, 3D comic letters and say add word balloon, it will automatically add a word balloon. I have my own fonts installed and I have an add-on. Oh, by the way, if this is ever too fast, it's because the the, the uh, cursor is really far away. So if you shift right click, that will set the cursor to be exactly on uh, that object. So shift right click is how you uh, place a cursor on the surface of a mesh. And as soon as the cursor is placed on the surface of a mesh, now when we move it around, it moves at a normal speed. Um, but if I place the cursor way far away over there, now when I move it around, it's too fast to, to handle. So you just, it's just a, a blenderism. You have to know how to use it. Um, so let's move this letter up and over. And just like with everything, if you, if you go into edit mode, um, you can, uh, hold on a second, I'm getting a phone call. I've got a pause that so uh, you can extrude this out let's go ahead and grow that once and then hit alt C to make it hard and then grab just that edge and collapse that so that's a little a little uh, a little word balloon tail there it's good so now we've got a word balloon and a character so if we go up here to 3d comic and you say export 3d comic it's not going to work because you have to save your scene first. Basically, wherever you save your scene is going to save. Um, so this is where I'm saving the, the Inkbots panel. But wherever you save this is going to save a uh, a full folder of of the website for you. All the JS files and all the all the GLTF files and everything required to make the comic. So if you just call this my first comic and you put it in the uh, in a folder where you you're, you're okay with a lot of things to show up. Um, this is going to become the database for our comic. So hit save. Okay, so now that we've saved our scene, we can go to 3D Comic and say export complete 3D Comic. And while it's doing that, uh, it's thinking, so it's going to march through every scene in the blend file and apply the modifiers, decimate things, do some magic, write out a GLTF file for each one of the scenes, and then generate the HTML and JavaScripts that's needed to do the comic book, and then it will eventually load a web browser with your comic in it and you can look at it in a web browser just the same exact way that your readers are going to look at it when they see it. Now uh, this file it, you might want to change it a little bit so let's go ahead and like move the light so if we go back to Blender here we can you can see that the lights are a little bit different that's because EV render is a little bit different than WebGL so always check your work inside of WebGL. Um, if you go over here into the lighting this is the light that it made for us um, and let's go ahead and just rotate it around a little bit so that we can get a slightly better thing. If we want to rotate it around Z while it's rotating, just tap the Z key and it'll rotate around the global origin. So let's have the light sort of coming from the side a little bit like that. Go ahead and hit save. And then we're going to use, instead of generating the entire comic, we're just going to export this one panel because sometimes you can have like lots and lots of panels and it'll take a long time to re-export them all. And sometimes you just want to export just the one you're working on. And when you re-export it, it'll go ahead and compile the panel and then when it's done if everything goes correctly it'll just open up a web browser and you can read it again
usually takes, you know, 10, 15 seconds. This is where I would play elevator music. <laughs> also, you can see that the other tabs are working, so now we're looking at it with light as a little bit more from the side. Um, so let's, uh, as you scroll, you're controlling the time. So let's make it so that this word balloon disappears. So I keep doing a lot of that. So what I do is I have, if you go to the middle of the animation here, to, um, and let's say like around here, like around 38, if we select it, let's go ahead and put it into work mode. And if you go into the utilities here, I have a key scale hide with a little close eyeball. So um, if you go key scale hide, it will automatically scale it down to zero and then put a bounce curve on it so that when it plays back, you'll see it actually comes up and pops into place. So um, we can go ahead and save our scene and then say export 3D panel. And uh, that's about it. Um, if you don't want to export and you just want to read the panel, you can just read the comic with the last menu there. Um, and there's other little goodies and bits and pieces in there, but that's the gist of it. Um, notice that every single time it exported we have the old versions. Um, so you can see the, the lights are a little different in each. Just close those tabs. Um, and if you're ever in doubt just hit reload, shift reload on the reload button and it'll reload the, the tab so you can see. Um, so you can see that the panel is now showing up and disappearing. So if you want to make a new panel and you want to do two side by side here and have uh, two panels, we'll go ahead and say shift A and we'll say insert row and we'll say two. And now it automatically made two panels. So if we look at this, we can say, okay, we've got a, let's put something in, let's put something in the panel so we can see them. Let's uh, put a monkey in this one. Um, and then if you also go up here to uh, one other thing on navigation, I have first, next, previous, and last, and I have them set up to home, end, and page up and page down. So I can read the comic by hitting page up and page down. So here's page up. And then there's this empty comic, then there's the monkey. And if I ever want to move the monkey to be earlier so that it's right after this one, I can hit control page up, which will shift it earlier. So now it's this one, then the monkey, then the empty one. Um, and that menu is right here in the panels. There's uh, This is navigate and this is shift scene earlier and shift scene later. You can sign them to whatever hotkeys you like. And these do the obvious thing, duplicate panel, uh, inject or extract a panel so that it saves or loads the scene. Uh, and these ones are basically first, next, previous, last, and delete. Um, so let's go to the... So this panel doesn't have anything in it, so the the, the, the lighting sucks. So I'm going to go ahead and um, do my subdiv modifier, and I'm going to go ahead and say color, ink and tune shade visible. Now I've got a monkey. Let's go to this one and make a another mesh. Let's make a... I don't know, make a torus. So now let's make a torus knot. And let's do ink and tune shade visible. And let's subdivide that. And let's rotate it around so it looks cool. All right, so we have this, this, and this. And if we want to make a, a word balloon here, we can pop to the middle. When you make a new word balloon, it automatically chooses a random letter. So this one says, I don't believe it. But if I do it again and I make a new word balloon, it will choose a different one. <laughs> uh, and then if you want to change what's in them, just go into the, select the text and then hit go into edit mode. And now you can type uh, Audi or whatever you want. Uh, control enter is my hotkey for leaving this mode, but you can set up your own hotkeys for all that stuff. Um, uh, Audi exclamation point. And you can scale these around and do whatever you want with them for that. Um, so, this and then we don't need anything for this. If we want to animate this guy, we can select it. And if we just insert keyframes, go to the last keyframe and maybe do a, uh, I don't know, a, a, what are we at? Z rotate, I guess. I'll make it go 360. 360 is a little bit much for the, the, the size of the panels. Um, I, I did notice, so uh, insert keyframe. All right, save our scene. 3D comic, export complete 3D comic. Now, these are gonna be two side-by-side -side panels, but they're still gonna be really tall, so we might wanna reduce the height of the panel. Um, let's take a look at it and see what we think of it. Obviously, because we're exporting three panels now, it's gonna take three times as long. So this is where you, when you have a long panel of 60 or so panels within your comic, ah, uh, that's frustrating. What is that? Okay, 
This is a bug. I've debated if I should fix it or not. Uh, let me tell you about this. So first things first, you'll notice that the scene is a little bit borked. If you just resize it and then revert, uh, it'll automatically go back to the way it was. Um, and the reason that error showed up was because I did not put this torus knot in the export panel. Basically nothing can be outside of these collections. So when you go through with your page up and page down to the different panels, you have to make sure that every single thing that you do is inside the export collection. Basically the export collection here is what is actually exported when your comic is created. If you have something at the top level, um, that error will show up. Basically, I, I left it there because uh, I don't want to smartly put it in there because sometimes I have really high res things and <coughs> it'll just make it crazy. So I'll maybe make a better warning, but basically you need to be really clean about what you put where. Um, just make sure you always put something, put your stuff in the export collections. Also don't hide the letters collection. Um, I'll bulletproof that stuff as I go. I might come up with a better way of doing it. I'm just, just trying to decide. So re-export, and it'll take a little while to do it again, but this time it won't fail because everything is in the right place. Um, again, this is something I, can, I make for myself. I could obviously bulletproof it if I were a company, but this is just me. I, I actually do something else during the day. I just make these comics at night because I think it's cool, and I'm sharing it with you all for free because I want there to be more 3D comics. Um, so here you go. Uh, here's our comic. We've got this panel and we've got these two side by side. Now you can see this one is sort of like skewing around because we, we did something weird with it. Uh, looks like we, I don't know what I did, but I did something weird. Um, I might need to scale that better. Um, oh, did I animate the, uh, oh, I animated the, oops, I animated the wrong thing. Um, anyway, you can see, oh, by the way, side by side panels, uh, the camera is shared between the two of them. Um, it's also a good idea when you're working on these things to test how it looks on uh, mobile. So if you hit F12 in your web browser, there's this button up here that tests it into mobile mode. And you can see that like in mobile mode, it's a, uh, that scale is a little bit weird, isn't it? Let's fix that. What was that? So uh, we're in here and when I was animating it, oh, I think I just wrote, did I do something odd with it? Oh, we had it rotated. We have, uh, uh, hmm. Well, let's apply that rotation, shall we? Let's apply the scale. So there's that, and there's that. And let's go to the other end here. I'm not sure what exactly the deal was with that. So I'm just going to. So now we've got a bunch of comics, but we, we, we're just going to export just that one. You can see why export panel is different than export complete comic, because it's a little faster. Huh, I have no idea what that is. That, that is a bug, and I have to figure out what it is. Um, oh, you know what? I bet it's because the panels are, are really, really tall. Yeah, they're really, really tall, and it's probably confused. So I'm going to go ahead and make those panels be... 50% height as well. So let's go to that one and let's go to this one. And you can mess with those at your own peril. Save and let's export the complete comic since I changed multiple panels. Let's see if that makes it any better. I'll show you one other thing while that's doing that. So if you go into the folder where you downloaded, uh, where you saved your files, and you look at it, hold on a second. If you go into your comic folder, you can see this is what it actually made. So this is where the, the, the Blender file is and all of these other things, basically everything but the Blender file is what the comic book creator made. So some of the things are things like the Apple icons that you actually see uh, when someone saves a bookmark to your comic book on the website. Um, this files.js file is the file that actually makes uh, the order of the comics, it auto generates this stuff. I would recommend you don't have to touch any of this stuff, uh, but it just is here. Your panels actually exist here as GLTF files. And if you select them, you can actually look at them. Uh, they have a little ball around them, which is how, how the, the sky is done. So when you zoom in, you can see like there's a little tiny monkey over there. Um, and then the images are like the, the images that actually used to make the web page. And then it automatically generates this HTML file 
uh, which has a bunch of stuff. You don't ever need to touch any of this stuff. If you ever want to look at it from the web, from your file system, if you just double click on this read local.bat, this is what Blender is actually calling when it opens the, the comic is it's, it's actually running that comic to, to open this page. Um, but you don't ever really need to do that because you can always just do it directly from uh, Blender here by just going 3D comic, read 3D comic, and it'll automatically run that bat file for you. Um, huh. I'll get to the bottom of this when I have more time. Um, obviously, weirdness abounds, um, but there you go. So that should be the basics of how to get started making a comic. Um, and if you have any questions, you can always go to Facebook and uh, I run a 3D comic uh, sculpting group here called How to Sculpt 3D Comics, and I post nonsense and GIFs and, and information and tips and tricks and blah, blah, blah. I'll probably post this video there. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. Good luck. I look forward to seeing what you guys make. Uh, oh, one last thing. Uh, if you want to, I recommend uh, hosting your website on GitHub. That's what I do. Um, they have a thing called GitHub Pages. It costs like, I think, 80 bucks a year. Uh, there's free ones. You can use Wix or Squarespace or WordPress or whatever, but basically your 3D comic is a website, and so you need to serve it. That's your business. It's not mine. Um, the free version will automatically put a, a link back to my t-shirt shop. Um, so when you go to the 3D comic stuff and you save out your comic, this little footer down here is why it's free. Um, basically, I have a 3D print here that um, we're printing out so we have a couple of these for sale and then uh, I also have a, a, the link to the making 3d comics I have my creator stuff here and then there's obviously uh, my t-shirt so if you want a Inkbots t-shirt go nuts um, the, the paid version just removes that um, so anyway uh, github pages thumbs up uh, definitely worth a read um, I like it that's how I serve 3d comic dot shop so uh, I'll put that back up on the screen so people can look at it. So here you go. All right. Thanks so much. Oh, by the way, every time you reload the page, uh, a new cover gets used. Um, it's, again, that sort of shuffle thing. So if you want to save your own covers, just override uh, in this folder. If you go into the images folder, there's these covers. So if you if you follow my exact naming convention for the covers, you can, so I have, like, you can see here all the covers that I have for the... Uh, the ink bots, you can just override these with your own JPEGs and they'll show up uh, with your art in them. It'll still say blah, blah, blah up here, but this will automatically reload. And if you save a bunch of these in that folder with that same naming convention, when people randomly hit the site, it'll randomly choose a different cover for you. Um, it automatically puts that little uh, page chair thing over the top of it, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but it's up to you to, to make your own stuff and go nuts. Uh, anyway, if you got this far, thanks for watching. Uh, good luck.